Hi y'all, it's Mindset Monday. How are you? It's Latrice Bartley with Purposefully Living. Listen, I know I look a little different. Um, today, this weekend was kind of like my little getaway to just spend some time with God. Um, I do that whenever I'm getting ready to also homeschool prep. And so yeah, nothing fancy today. Just me serving you this word. So for those of you that may be new to the podcast, maybe you're watching a replay, thank you for taking a few moments out of your day and allowing me to encourage you. And my encouragement for you is always to get you fit, get you focused, intentional, and tenacious. And those that have been following me to keep you fit, right? Focused, intentional, and tenacious. Our anchor scripture for the Purposefully Living podcast is let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, because he is our perfect example. And so I want to just jump right on in. Um, today, we are going to get fit in our faith. Uh, it's still getting fit in our faith. As I mentioned to some of you all, you will see the podcast having different titles, whether it's getting fit in parenting, faith, marriage, um, because the reality is being fit lowercase f-i-t is a lifestyle right um but i'm here to help you capital f-i-t focused intentional and tenacious and i love to break those down by saying we're going to focus on what when we think about focusing we're concentrating where we have one aim right and then when we are um, going to be intentional it's all about action we're going to do. Um, and so I believe our focus, number one, is the word of God because our spiritual fitness leads everything else. And then our action, right? We have action because faith without works is dead. Tenaciousness is simply two things. Don't quit and prepare because the reality is you have to be be prepared um, when we are intentional and beginning to walk things out. I like to say that life happens when we're lifing, right? We have a plan, but then life has a plan of its own. And so we become tenacious to not quit. We're not going to forfeit the race. Um, the race is not given to the swift, right? Um, so we're going to just be steady. And so today, today is actually a little different. God took me a different way um, of encouragement to talk to you about you. And now I know you're like, well, don't you always talk to me about me? Yeah, but literally the topic for today is you. And so I want to tell you where this came from. Y'all, I don't even have notes. This is how raw this is. Um, he's been brewing this since Saturday. So I want to read you something. I was listening to a song that blessed me and it got to the point that I had to stop because I could hear the Lord sharing so much with me through that song. And that's when he was reminding me, you, I want you to talk to him about you. And here's the thing. In the song, it was Travis Green all things new. Travis Green, all things new. But there gets to be a point, and I want to read it to you. It starts out saying, um, guilt has come to weigh you down. Where I am, freedom is now. Here now, pouring out my spirit, receive it all. Fear come just to keep you bound. In this moment, you're breaking out here now. Pouring out my spirit, receive it all, making all things new, freeing you from you. And every time I kept hearing that, freeing you from you, it was like the Lord was saying, I want you to encourage them to pay attention to you. And here's where I kind of want to just encourage you starting out. We are in a society that is making everything about you, you, you live your best life. It's all about you, what you can do, level up. It's just an, an emphasis on us in um, a bad, not in a, not in a good way, very selfish society. Just, you know, however you feel, live it up. If that's what, what makes you happy, do it. Um, and that's not good. And so I really wanted today to remind you that some of us need to be free from you because 
a lot of times we feel like people are a problem. If God just removed this situation, that would help. Like if you did this, if you gave me money, if you, we have all the solutions except for realizing that oftentimes we are our problem. You are your problem, whether it's in your mind, how you're thinking, whether it's in how you're handling things. We really have to begin to say like David, create in me a clean heart. Lord, Lord, show me. Is there any wicked way? Search me. Search me from the inside out. When we're getting fit, that's a process that starts inside out, not working on this outer body. No, 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 no. Search me from the inside out because most times what we see on the outside is a result of what's on the inside. Most times the weight that you got put on didn't come just because you was eating donuts. You was eating donuts because you were stressed. You was eating the way you was because you were allowing your emotions to go rap, go wild. And as a result, you have, you felt that's what you did, right? And so then the result of that is emotional distress and weight and oppression and all the things. So we have to start on the inside and get to the root. But as I was thinking about that, I said, my God, he's making all things new, freeing you from you. And I believe some of us need to be free from you. I want to read a scripture. I was getting ready to search it. Um, I couldn't think of where it was. My mind just went blank. I normally, y'all know I live by my nose. Um, so bear with me for just a minute. I want to find um it just came to me thank you holy spirit all right here we go i could hear it in my head and i couldn't think of where it was proverbs 14 and 12. proverbs 14 and 12 says in the new living translation there is a path before each person that seems right but it ends in death um, in the King James Version, it says, there is a way which seemeth right unto, the, uh, unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. In Amplified, it says, which seems right and appears straight before him. Y'all, I wanted to just encourage you today that whereas society and culture says it's all about you, what, what you feel, what you think, how you want to do it, be the best version of you. I don't know what that is. The best version is what God has made you to be. And for some of you, just like that song said, the Lord wanted me to really bring to you. Many of you need to be delivered from you. Like I said, it's not your mama. It's not your father. It's not all the things that you're making. You don't need extra money. You may think you do, but you the problem. If he gave you more money, you still wouldn't know how to steward it. If he brought you a, another husband or a different relationship, it you would still be coming to that relationship. So you... <laughs> need to deal with you and we have to begin to say god show me me from the inside out begin to expose what part needs to get fit what's not right what will bring shame what i i think that i know the route but is this am i aligned to your will to your way and so i wanted to encourage you that we need to do our work so that god can free us from you and when you understand that number one like i said with our anchor scripture let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus that's the first word we have to begin to say renew my mind according to your word you must see yourself through the lenses of God's word what did he say to you your situation cannot be magnified over what God says. How you feel, these feelings and emotions cannot be magnified more than what the word of God says. What did he say? That is what you must do. You must begin. And I don't care if you look at yourself and you like chosen, appointed for what? I'm not caught. If that's what he said, that's what you need to say. You must align with what the word of God says. And what I want you to see is you are watering the you that you want to see. You know, when you think about planting something and it's going down in that dirt and packed down in this dark, there's a water regimen that you must do for sometimes a while before you even see a little sprout of something. You don't plant the seed and then in a week of water and it's there. But sometimes you out there, it's the consistency of the thing that as you water and as you water and as you water in yet a little while, you start to see 
the fruit of that discipline, the fruit. I need you to know that it's time to water you through the word of God. Mindset Monday, we got to allow this mind to be renewed by the word of God. Where you sit, maybe you're not happy with your circumstances. Maybe you're not where you want to be in life. Maybe you think you the bomb and you need to calm down some. You need to humble. Wherever that looks like, I need today to encourage you and challenge you to be honest. God already knows. He knows your strength and your weaknesses. He knows you inside and out. He made you. And so you have to be honest to sit at the feet of God and, and lay all of you down. You, some of you need to be free from you. You are your worst critic. You are the hardest on yourself. There's nothing good. If somebody asks you for six things that you can change, you could give them 16. But if they said, tell me six, two or three good things about yourself, you would sit there. That's a problem because the enemy is always magnifying our failures and our weaknesses and all the things. But we have to begin to take the authority to, to stand on the word of God. You are a good work. You are Christ's workmanship. You are a blessing. You were chosen. You were adopted in love before the foundation. He God was thinking about you. He gave his son for you. Christ died on the cross for you. His death freed you. His death healed you. His death redeemed you. You must believe that. Stand up and walk therein. Get up. Get up and believe the word. Get up and stand firm in the truth of the word. Get up and stand firm in the faith. Get up. But you got to believe this word. We are so, so many of us are so church girls and we can spit. Da -da 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 -da. It is written, but you don't believe none of it. You are your worst critic. We always in a, we praying, God, that I know that I want you to use me. Da -da. Okay, he told you to write the book, but you looking at, but I got a GED and you, you telling him what you can't do. You need to be free from you. You need to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You need to allow the word of God. When I was just um, the other week reading through Genesis 1, and I just kept reading the creation, how he, how God just, oh my God, Elohim, just, just how he created life and but I started paying attention how everything he looked at, he said, and it's good. And it's good. That, that's what he said about you. And it's good. Then when it got to the living things, it said he's good and he blessed it. He gave us authority. But I love in the Amplified in Genesis 1 29, it said he validated it completely. But we must see ourselves through the land of God's word, y'all, to go and to do the things. And I need you to get this because for some of us, God is calling us to the deep. He is calling you that we got to stop being babes. He need you to stand up and believe the word of God that you're reading every day. You got to let this word really change your mind and do the work that it is called to do. And so that song, it was something about that he's making all things new, freeing you from you. Some of you need to be free. You are not your past. You are not the fragments of your divorce. You are not the whatever the issue. That is not what has the last say. Stop magnifying the issue above an, a mighty God who can do anything. But you got the line with the word of God. What did he say? When you think about the workmanship of something, Ephesians 2 and 10, when it talks about we are his workmanship, those of us we've given our life to, we are his workmanship. When you think about somebody that makes something and they 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 put um, all the work and how they carve it or they sand it or they design it and they're fashioning it, like there's a detail that goes in there. That's what God did with you. How dare you challenge God and say he made a mistake? Your head too big. The gift he gave you. My smile is too wide. I don't like how I look. My voice is too deep. Oh, okay. So you you telling a hold on, the clay telling the potter that he made a mistake? Who are you? He know what he gave you. He know the gift that he put in you. You need to be free from you and begin to allow God to do what he wants to do, his will and his way. And so I just had a short message of encouragement today because some of you need to fall on your knees and say, God, forgive me. I, here's a great example. I remember um, when I was newly saved 
I've always been a crier. I'm naturally a crier. Whether I, I love you, I'm celebrating with you, I'm a cry. If I'm about to fight you, I'm a cry. It don't matter. I just cry, right? And I remember just, though I have a strong personality, I don't come to play with you, but I cry first. You know, and I remember feeling like that was such a sign of weakness. I used to get so upset when I would cry. Um, and we used to have testimony service at my old church and I could barely get, I'm already crying. I'm like, Ugh. and so one day it just so happened that my pastor did a lesson on our spiritual gifts. And all of a sudden she went into, she said, now I want to cover this. Some of you are criers. And I remember like, <laughs> She said there can be a commercial owned as very, you know, um, you know, just very uh, like hallmarkish and you'll shed a tear. You can hear something in somebody. You shed a tear. You weep easy. She said, don't minimize that. You have the heart of God. She said, there is a special um, compassion that he's giving you for others. She said, some things, believe it or not, some people are cold. They can be very, they out of touch. She said, but you, you feel and y'all, and she began to talk about that gift. I said, oh my God, because I remember feeling like, what's wrong? Why you made me like this? Me challenging, but, but I'm passionate about people. Like I love hard. I want to help as many people as I can. And so I feel them. And, and then that allows me to go pray for them. And, and being an intercessor is such a, if I could say a selfless gift. Because you don't go tell people, you know what I'm saying? When you're a real, a true intercessor and God puts people on your heart to stand in the gap, it ain't necessarily that you even telling them, you know, he, he reveals things and you begin to pray. So even in that, it's a selfless thing, right? Because if you got the ogre, oh I just want you to know, I was praying for you today. I was praying for you for three hours because the Lord laid you, mm, that that's not, no, why, why you had to, sometimes he, he, most times you're just doing it with no one ever knowing. But it's like, I, you know, as she began to explain that, I understood the value of that. Why would I ask God to take something from me? And that's, that's what he had me to lead in so many instances for. I'm the person, I meet somebody in the store and they help me with the um, uh, outfit and they could be sweet. And y'all, I'm in the car, I'm like, Lord, Jenny. Jenny, bless her God. Lord, if she don't know you, Lord, I'm all the way to the next thing, praying for Jenny. But that's the heart God gave me. I'm crying for Jenny, don't even know Jenny. And sometimes you be feeling like, Lord, what is wrong with me? Like, I don't even know the girl. I'm up here shedding. But that's the compassion of God. Hear me. Some of us, we, you need to be delivered from you. You need to ask God to open up your eyes and really show you you from his perspective. You're not your past. But you've got to come up and allow the word of God to transform you inside out. You're trying to change and become and do what the world says. And that's not who God made you to be. So some of you, I don't know why this message in particular, he had me to encourage you, but I'm just being obedient. It's time to sit at the face of the feet. And some of you just need to ask, who am I? Who am I? Who did you create me to be? Show me me. Show me the work that you have for me to do. Reveal to me how you want me to do it. I feel, Lord, that I have a gift. I love writing and it's effortless. Is that how you, how do you want to use that? Show me me and keep asking. He will speak. But then when he shows you, we must be obedient to walk out what he said. Don't challenge it. Don't, oh no, I know you ain't called me to teach. I ain't teaching nothing. I don't speak before people. Oh, really? Okay, so you asked, he answered, and what you don't realize is you're stopping the hands of God because you're telling him, oh, no, you don't know. No, you ain't mean to tell me that. I ain't doing that. Oh, okay, Clay. That, that's what we do. We tell the potter how to mold and make and perfect and prune you. No, you say, God, oh, my goodness. Well, show me. I didn't see that I could do that. Show me. All he wants is a willing heart. And so some of us need to be free from you. Some of you, you think too highly of yourself. You know, I have a degree and I'm, I'm mastered and I, okay, but he gave you that intellect. He gave you that wisdom. He gave you, you need to calm down. There's a spirit of pride. And so the things that you think is all about where you can connect and, and I've done such and such. God said, I don't care nothing about that. You won't have to come down. You won't have to kneel down. 
You're going to have to bow down and allow me to show you what I wanted to do with that. And for some of you, you're going to be surprised because the degree and all the credentials, that was your thing. That ain't going to take you for where he's trying to take you. All your years. You didn't ask him. It was just, this was what we do. And then my family would have done. And so I'm going to, so you had your plan and you fulfilled it. <laughs> but God said, for where I'm going, I, none of that stuff I'm taking. Where your, your human effort, no, it's going to be by my spirit. It's going to be, it, I'm building a whole different you. But will you be willing to allow him to do it, his will and his way? So y'all, that's all I had. Oh, I did want to share with you a couple of scriptures that I thought was so, 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 so important. Um, when we think about being delivered, um, from you being free from you that requires a surrendering that requires um I, I love, I said the other week that I want to always put things in get fit perspective, right? So get focused. So what does that look like practically? Okay, Latrice, you're telling me I need to be free from me. You need to focus on God's word. I would challenge you to begin to say to God in prayer, show me me. Show me who I am through your eyes. Look up in the word of God, Ephesians 2 and 10. God, you said I'm your workmanship. What, what did you build in me? These are some things I think I, I want to know the purpose of the product. I'm your product. So I'm coming back to my creator to say, God, show me through the word who I am. Right. And then as he intent, the, the intentionality part of that is as he begins to show you journal it, document it. And if it's something that you didn't see or I didn't understand, you ask follow up. God speaking. I don't like to be in front of nobody. What do you mean? And it don't mean that he's going to put you in front of 2,000 people. He may just be putting you in front of a children's class. He may be putting you in front of a little small classroom to just get you started. But he needs a willingness. So then you ask him, what does that look like? And he'll show you intentionally how to walk it out. So I want to encourage you to focus on God's work this week. Ask God your assignment. Get focused. Who am I? For some of you, you need to ask, God, what, what do I need to be free from? God, what can't go? We serve a holy God. Some of you, you're proudful. Some of you, you're entangled in strongholds. God is trying to show you that he's trying to perfect your character, but you don't want to yield. You Yielding, I, I taught Olivia this. She asked me, she said, Mommy, what does it mean to yield? I said to say yes to God. When you yield, it's like, I stop. I say yes. Because think about it. Yielding naturally is a, though we don't do it, is a slow down. It ain't hit green and go. Yielding normally means slow down, slow down because it's getting ready to be red. Yielding is starting to slow down and bow down and say, God, your will, your way. I say yes. I say yes. And then allow him to show you who you are through the lenses of his word. Allow him to show you how he wants to use that past, that pain, those things that you think has unqualified you. No. He said you need to be free. That's your perspective. You don't know how. I allowed that thing to come to mold and to make you and to perfect you, how it's pruning you. But we have to be willing to yield and say yes to his way. So a couple of scriptures. Hold on. I want to because I always like to give you um, some scriptures. Of course, Romans 12, 1 through 2. I want you to read Romans 12, 1 through 2. And then I also want you to look at... Uh, Okay, here we go. I want you to look at 2 Corinthians 7. Okay, read seven, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 7. Um, and these are just some good scriptures for meditation, but especially Romans 12, 1 through 2. Um, and I want to read Psalms 37. When I, when I say being free from you, a lot of it, y'all, is just we want to do what we want to do. We want to serve God and do our own thing. And it doesn't work like that. You, When you give him a yes, it's his will. And so I love this scripture 
um, specifically in the Passion Translation, it says in Psalms 37 and 5, give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. He will appear as your righteousness as sure as the dawning of a new day. Give God the right. Ain't that crazy that you, I even got to say that. Like he is the creator of your life. But you going to try to lead your own life? No, come on. When you're saying, some, like I said, some of you need to be free from you. You're, it's yielding and saying, God, your way, your way. Fix your eyes on the promises of God. We have to trust him and see it through his eyes. It don't matter that you don't see it. But if he said that this is who you are, then you water that. Remember that thing. You water the you that you want to become. God, I thank you. I thank you for the regular man. I thank you that you've chosen me to speak your word. I thank you that you've chosen me to teach these kids. I thank you that you chose me to be the wife of this man. And I will be the help me that you've called me to do. I thank you for the assignment to write the book. And I'm though I may seem qualified, God, who am I that you would be mindful of me? I will write it as we write it together. You you begin to water the you that you want to become. In the net translation, Psalms 37, 23, it says the Lord grants success to the one whose behavior he finds commendable. Even if he trips, he will not fall headlong for the Lord holds his hand. This is the God that you're talking to. He's so faithful. He's so loving. But we have to be free from us. People not your problem. You need God to deal with your heart. You need God to give you a different set of eyes. Okay? And then Psalms 37 um, in the Amplified, I love this. The steps of a good and righteous man are directed and established by the Lord. And he delights in his way and blesses his path. So those are just some scriptures that I want you to take time this week. And like I said, listen to that song, um, Travis Green, All Things New. Allow him to free you from you, free you from your perspective. Because some of us, we need God to renew our mind. Yes, you have made some mistakes. Yes, you didn't do all the things right. Yes, people know about it. But who cares? Who cares? He wants to use you. Isn't that like you think about crazy us and it's like he wants to use you. Yes. So be free. Listen, don't go over that old history. Don't worry about the past. Be alert. He's doing something new. And it begins with being free from you. It begins in seeing yourself through the lenses of God's word. So that's all I have, y'all. I pray something I said blessed you. Again, for those of you, I would challenge you. Ask God, show you you. Show you, ask him, who am I? So that you can walk out and become who he's called you to be. You're his workmanship. There's things that he's put in you that nobody else. I tell y'all, listen, somebody may be watching me. And you go, oh my goodness, my name Latrice too. Oh my goodness, I live in Florida too. I don't care how many coincidences, we, you not me. I got, you don't have my personality. You don't have what God is, but there's some things that he put in me. And I'm so thankful for who I am because I want him to use me. I want to see myself through my eyes. And sometimes even this morning I was crying and I said, who am I that you would even trust me with some of these things and this business and to allow me to speak and encourage someone. But God, I, I, I say, yes, your will, your way. So that's all I have. Get fit, stay fit, focused, intentional, and tenacious. Come on. Let God show you the power that is within you, but it gets activated in the spirit. All right? Have a great week. Bye.